All right, everybody. This is uh, this is my mill, my sawmill I built, homemade. Um, I think it's about a 17 foot log bed there. Uh, those are spaced. I want to say about every three feet. Um, basically, the rail is just two inch by two inch angle iron uh, flipped up on its end there, and the wheels sit down in the groove fit down in there nicely and uh basically just you see it it's a uh, concrete pads there underneath the wood and everything's bolted together level straight level plumb whatever it's all it's all ready to go um this is the frame with a winch for lifting and lowering Let's see if we can get up here and show you a different different view of it basically uh, you can kind of see what's going on here the winch pulls one way and it, it loosens or tightens uh, the cable for uh, raising and lowering that's all homemade there obviously it looks like it so just a boat winch regular boat winch painted it to fit the paint of the sawmill here um, this tubing here is two inch. This is two and a half, three sixteenths walls. Um, basically, I've got a Duramax 18 horsepower engine. It's uh, so far so good. I took the starter key off it. Um, it, it I didn't want to mount batteries and all, so took that off. Uh, let's see. Got a three inch pulley or sheave here from the engine running a, uh, you know, just a lawnmower belt. Uh, blade tensioner is basically just, just a lever action. Blade tensioner puts pressure on the butt, on the belt, I'm sorry, belt tensioner. And uh, I'm running a ten and one quarter inch, ten and one quarter inch pulley running my wheel. Um, got pillar block bearings here and here, holding my uh, my axle in, and these screw holes on the back. Top to bottom screw holes are oversized about an eighth of an inch to uh, set my alignment on this wheel. I can move this back around just a hair and it, it moves the front a little bit. So uh, There's my blade guides. They uh, shift left to right on this rail. They can go all the way to this point and this side can go all the way until you run into your axle which would probably hit the wheel first but either way uh, plenty of movement both directions um, motor mount is here is basically free floating off of this frame it's the only way I could make it fit around this rail here so uh, that's that this is the bottom side of the tensioner alignment side I was having issues with my axle uh, braking, so this middle bearing right here was added to uh, support that. Basically that plate, the plate here that everything's attached to slides inside of these angle iron grooves that I've uh, welded in and that plate slides freely side to side, front and back. Um, a snug fit but it's it's loose enough for that plate to slide around on the top side of that uh, just run some threaded rod through um, here's a coupler nut welded to uh, just a spacer basically between the coupler and the and the plate and a threaded rod nut with a uh, cotter pins and so on on both sides it allows 
it allows the rod to spin both ways without running through this this uh, channel here basically uh, depending on you know your movement this one or this one depending on your movement in or out would adjust the pitch of the wheel in or out this way at the same time tightening and loosening both of these at the same time are either going to tighten your blade or loosen your blade so it's a two-in-one action here you get tensioner and you get uh, alignment so basically uh, there's the alignment on the wheels um, these are just I want to say they're about 16 and 3 quarter inches from top to bottom from blade to blade I think it's about 16 and 3 quarter inches uh, these are smaller wheels I didn't want huge wheels on here uh, these are Cook's complete blade guide assemblies you can see multiple adjustments multiple adjustments top bottom sides um, grease fitting I want to say the the bearing itself this here is uh, roughly two inches I believe they advertise but you can see adjustments in all directions basically this bolt slides all the way through and comes all the way back to about here and uh, obviously these as you tighten or loosen it's gonna it's gonna shift this uh, in all directions until you get it lined up with your blade because I'm using wheels rubber wheels instead of uh, actual band tires um, I set my my gap here just a little bigger than what Cooks recommends and that's uh, because it tends to ride back further on these wheels than if they were on a solid or rigid wheel so uh, anyways that's pretty much my sawmill build uh, I did forget to mention these the tensioners for the uh, for the frame this is a turnbuckle obviously you can see that turnbuckle and uh, quick disconnects here if I, if I need to disassemble this in a hurry uh, my cable system comes up into some homemade pulleys up here Let's see if we can can't really see them let's get around here and see if we can see them basically some homemade pulleys uh, these are shower door pulleys I think they're inch and a half or inch and a quarter and they're basically bolted up in there with some angle brackets from Walmart I'm sure and uh, they're just bolted up in there the cable goes around it comes around and then uh, as shown earlier it uh, attaches to this this drive here and uh, pulls up and down same same situation on both sides it's the same thing and uh, the thing is you can actually once you get your blade your blade set to the height with your bunk from here to here here to here be the same uh, I'm within probably a 32nd of an inch being the same on each side uh, when I first started it was about it was about an eighth inch off so what I did was I came over here and, and adjusted this inner out and the one on that side inner out until until this was you know uh, level with the bunk so uh, I don't know what else really to really to talk about that's um, pretty much my sawmill as far as log dogs and all uh, these slide up basically they slide over you wedge it into your wood and then turn your handle and it secures it in there tightly it's just a piece of it's a one inch T over a three-quarter galvanized steel tubing and uh, I stole that from somebody I don't remember who I can give credit for for that but that was uh works very well I'm very happy with that it was cheap 
easy um, simple little simple little thing there that works these are uh, inch and a half square tube and a half uh, and this is you know left over two inch tubing from the steel I bought for the mill basically undo my nut this slides up and down however necessary and uh, can come out completely if I need it to so on these I had originally had had built up a half an inch higher than the log bed and uh, I ran into some problems with that uh, my recommendation was that would be to keep these flush with your log bed or even you know an eighth of an inch lower than your log bed um, that way you can get rid of this and have a smooth flat bed completely from one side to the other and uh, basically those are four inch four inch channel and uh, just square tubing and you can see here lag bolt bolted in it goes down I think it's a three inch lag bolt and uh anyways pretty solid pretty solid bed i've put i've put some logs on there that my tractor had a tough time even lifting and i've had them on this bed and it's still level and straight um basically you can see i mean i know it doesn't mean much but that's a pretty level bed and the boards i had left over from redecking my utility trailer um, these are the boards that came off the trailer, so, uh, to keep them from just being wasted and thrown into a burn pile, uh, I can walk, walk behind my sawmill on top of the boards. And that's basically it. I'm not sure what else to go over here. Basically it right there. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helps you build yours. Thanks for watching.